Graduates, friends, families, faculty, and staff, I'm delighted and honored to be speaking to you on this most auspicious of days. I have to admit that I was tempted to read the entire second chapter of my dissertation, Delimiting Phenomenology, John Salas's Deconstructive Argument for the Necessity of Post-Phenomenological Research, but I decided to resist the temptation for at least two important reasons. First, the fine people who selected me for this honor told me, in no uncertain terms, to be, well, very brief. <laughs> that rules out good old chapter two already. It clocked in at 42 pages, which would take about an hour and a half to read out loud. Second, my understanding is that it's vital for a speech's audience to be able to relate to the speech's message. Again, chapter two is out. <laughs> Sometimes I don't even understand what I said there. Most phenomenological research, what is that anyway? Okay, so with chapter two no longer an option, I decided to speak about something that today's graduates, their friends, their families, and the entire GTU community could probably relate to. Homework. But not just any kind of homework, a very GTU kind of homework. The sacred kind. Now you may be thinking to yourself, is there really such a thing as sacred homework? My dissertation research tells me yes. I knew I could shoehorn my dissertation into this talk somehow. In fact, not only is there such a thing as sacred homework, but GTU students and faculty can be frequently seen doing it. Allow me to explain. Pierre Hedot, a contemporary French historian of Western philosophy, set out to do a very typical historian thing. Quote, the problem for me was to explain the apparent incoherencies of the ancient Greco-Roman philosophers, end quote. Okay, don't start snoozing just yet, because what Hado discovered is fascinating. Quote, I came to think that these apparent inco inco inconsistencies could be explained by the fact that Greek philosophers did not aim, above all, to provide a systematic theory of reality, but to teach their disciples a method with which to orient themselves, both in thought and in life, end quote. In fact, says Hado, the Greco-Roman philosophers of antiquity practiced philosophy as spiritual exercises. Quote, spiritual exercises can be best observed in the context of Hellenistic and Roman schools of philosophy. The Stoics, for instance, declared explicitly that philosophy for them was an exercise. In their view, philosophy did not consist in teaching an abstract theory but rather in the art of living. It is a concrete attitude and determinate lifestyle which engages the whole of existence. The philosophical act is not situated merely on the cognitive level, but on that of the self and of being. It is a progress which causes us to be more fully and makes us better." End quote. For the ancient Greco-Romans, Philosophy was truly philo sophia, philo meaning love, and sophia meaning wisdom. Philo sophia was the pursuit and practice of wisdom, the art of living. As such, philosophy was a pragmatic mode for forming, more than informing about, the philosopher's relationship with the world and everything in it, including one's neighbor, one's enemy, the state or nation, the natural world, and especially the divine, that which was understood to give order and existence to the world and everything in it. Philosophy was a sacred practice that required practice, just like my dad's golf swing. Sacred? Check. Requires practice? Check. According to Hedo, spiritual exercises just like my dad's golf swing, quote, must be taken up again and again in an ever-renewed effort, end quote. 
regardless of whether the topic happened to be politics, art, war, food, or community. Philosophy was a sacred practice, a spiritual exercise for the true philosopher, and it had by today's standards a radical scholarly agenda. Specifically, philosophy had a therapeutic vocation. Its aim was healthy transformation. Hado tells us, quote, all Western philosophical schools link their therapeutics to a profound transformation of the individual's mode of seeing and being. The object of spiritual exercises is precisely to bring about this transformation, end quote. Further suggesting that philosophia was a method of personal transformation closely tied to transforming one's relationship with the divine, get this. One of the meanings of therapia, the Greek root of the English word therapy, is act of worship. Now, having said all that, the discipline of philosophy may have a history steeped in the pursuit and practice of wisdom, but philosophy does not own the aim of philosophia. All scholarship, regardless of the discipline or disciplines involved, can and should be philosophia, can and should contribute to the art of living. I am very happy to say that I am most certainly not alone in this belief here at the GTU. The GTU's motto is where religion meets the world, but it could just as easily be where philosophia is our vocation. If you haven't already, scan the commencement program. What you see there is evidence that GTU students, and I might add, the faculty and staff that support them, have been very busy doing their homework, practicing the old school version of philosophy. Check out the titles of the theses and dissertations of this year's graduates. Here are just a few that captured my attention. Sacred Superheroes, a study of comic book fans and the religious quest in America. Open, Attentive, and Transformed, Activists Relating to the Immigrant Struggle, The Practice of Torture, Ethical Approaches in the Post-9-11 Era, and The Utilization of Spiritual Capital by the Practitioners of Traditional Chinese Medicine in the San Francisco Bay Area. What these projects have in common is not a discipline, a denomination, or a degree, what they have in common is the distinct whiff of philosophia. It is a testament to the therapeutic vocation embraced by GTU students that I could have chosen theses or, disserta thesis or dissertation titles at random, and that wonderful whiff of philosophia would have still been there. You see, we here at the GTU embrace doing work that causes us to be more fully and makes us better. We understand that what causes us to be more fully and makes us better is quite often to do work that causes others to be more fully and makes them better. That to be better, we must help the world and everything in it to be better. We understand that we must be philosophers, lovers and pursuers of wisdom in everything that we do. Life is our homework and it most certainly is a spiritual exercise. So graduates, what better time than commencement to practice the art of living by being grateful for who and what has made us better in our time at the GTU? And what better time than commencement to, pre pre to prepare to be better in what we do next by fully celebrating the flow of abundance and grace in the now? As the title of one of Hado's books suggests, the present alone is our happiness. So, my brother and sister philosophers, all of you, let's celebrate this day with gusto. Thank you so much.